Hello everyone, Rexlin here. In this video, I'll be providing you an overview on the common control schemes for playing Punishing Grey Raven. The video will be split into two parts, one part each for emulators and mobile gaming. You can skip to the relevant chapter in the video to find a guide that suits you. First off, if you're going with an emulator and haven't installed one yet, I highly recommend the Chinese version of Mumu, not to be confused with Memu. Mumu is highly optimized and is officially partnered and endorsed by Punishing Grey Raven. As for myself, my videos were all played and recorded on Mumu. This has been asked a lot, but there are no plans yet for a PC client. Take note that if you're gonna install Mumu, make sure it's the Chinese version and not the global one, as the global one is less stable. Other alternatives include LD Player, Mimu and Bluestacks 4, of which I will run them through in brief detail. It's also recommended to ensure that your virtualization is enabled for a better experience. If you plan to play using a PlayStation DualShock 4 or 5, make sure to download DS4 Windows so that it can emulate an Xbox controller and improve compatibility. As always, all relevant links will be included in the description. First up, the Mumu Guide. Once you have installed the Chinese version of Mumu, you'll notice that it doesn't come with Google services. All you need to do is look for this app here called KK Google Assistant, and it'll install all the services in one click. You can go into Mumu settings up here to tweak them as you see fit to suit your needs. Don't worry about the language barrier. I will include an English patch guide in the description. As I have a PlayStation DualShock 4 connected, I will boot up DS4 Windows for this. Feel free to change the settings to have it on startup if you always have your controller connected. You can ignore this step if you own an Xbox controller because it's plug and play. Once you're satisfied with settings, let's start the game. Once you're in the game, go to the gamepad settings by clicking this gamepad icon. It'll bring up the keybinds editor. Create a new preset by clicking over here, and then you can simply click on any part of the screen where you want to set a key. Then press the button on your gamepad where you want it mapped to. You will need a minimum of 13 buttons mapped. 8 for orbs, 2 for character swap, 3 for attack, dodge, and ultimate on top of the movement and camera sticks. It may seem daunting at first managing so many things at once, but don't worry. Soon enough, muscle memory will be developed. Drag these buttons down for the movement stick and the camera stick respectively. Click here to adjust the camera sensitivity slider to your liking. Next, let's input the keys. Click on each mapping and simply press the button you want on your gamepad. This is just how I play PGR, so you don't exactly have to follow how I map my keys. Feel free to come up with your own as long as it's comfortable. It may feel unintuitive at first, but you'll get used to it in due time. Once you're satisfied, click the blue button on the top right to save your preset and exit the editor. You can also press F12 to make your keybinds visible if you need more aid in remembering them. Next, mapping the keybinds for the keyboard. The steps are basically identical to setting up the gamepad. Click on the keyboard icon down here to access the keybinds editor. Create a new preset with this button, and just like the gamepad, click wherever you want to place your buttons on the screen. Drag these buttons down to the screen for the movement and camera stick respectively. Now click on each button and map them with the key you want. Once you're satisfied, click on the blue button on the top right to save your changes and exit the editor. Press F12 to make all buttons visible and make sure that the current scheme on the left is on keyboard instead of gamepad. 
And that concludes the setting up of gamepad and keyboard controls for Mumu. Next up, the Memu emulator. Once you've installed your game, click here to adjust the emulator settings as you see fit. As you can see, my gamepad is automatically detected by the emulator. I have my DualShock 4 connected with DS4 Windows active as we speak. Once you're in the game, click on the keyboard icon on the right panel here to access the editor. Make sure the gamepad tab is selected at the top. Click the drop down menu and create a new template and give it a name. The steps are similar to setting up Moomoo. Click any part of the screen to set your button and press the button on your gamepad that you want it mapped to. Drag the left and right stick onto the screen for your movement pad and camera respectively. Once you're satisfied with the settings, click save to exit the editor. Just like Mumu emulator, you can press F12 to hide or unhide the keybinds for your convenience. Now for setting up bindings for the keyboard, click the same keyboard icon on the right and make sure key mappings is selected at the top. Create a new preset and give it a name. Just like setting up the gamepad, click on the area where you want to place a button and map a key to it. Drag and drop the joystick button on top of the movement pad. Click advance and do the same with the 3D view button for your camera. Once you're satisfied with the settings, click on save to exit the editor. And that concludes the setting up of gamepad and keyboard controls for Memu. Next, we will talk about setting up controls for Bluestacks. Once you're on the main menu, go to the settings and ensure that the gamepad detection is not disabled. Once that is done, your gamepad should already be detected. Once you're in the game, click on the keyboard icon on the right panel. Click on Open Advanced Editor to bring up the editor. Click on the drop-down box to create a new scheme. The main difference here is that the button mappings for Bluestacks are shared between keyboard and gamepad. Click anywhere on the screen to place a button and then click the tiny gear icon in the circle to access the settings. Click on gamepad and then click on the tap key field and press your desired key. Now repeat the same steps for all remaining buttons. Once you're done with the basic buttons, drag and drop the D-pad onto the games and perform the same thing. Do the same with the free look button for your camera. Once you're satisfied with the changes, hit save to close the editor. By clicking on the keyboard button again, you can set the controls to gamepad for the buttons to show. Next, setting up for keyboard is fairly simple. Again, go to the editor with the keyboard button on the right and simply click on the location on the screen to immediately bind your keys.
The movement and camera keys are set to WASD and the arrow keys by default. You can edit them as you wish by clicking on the gear icon again. Hit save once you're satisfied and that concludes the control scheme setup for Bluestacks. Next up, LD Player. LD Player has an almost identical interface as Mumu and Memu. Again, you can edit your emulator settings in here. As usual, click on the keyboard icon and then the gamepad icon to access the gamepad keybind editor. Click anywhere on the screen to place a button and then you can bind your gamepad. Do this for all the essential buttons. Drag and drop the movement and camera buttons respectively. And now you're all set. Hit save to exit the editor. You can also check this box to unhide your keybinds. As for mapping the keyboard, click on the keyboard button instead of the gamepad. Just like the gamepad, click on anywhere on the screen to place your button, followed by your keybind. Do this for all the essential buttons. Drag and drop the movement and 3D view buttons onto their respective locations and hit save. We've come to the end of the emulator guides. The next thing we're going to talk about is the mobile controls. Apart from straight up playing the game with your fingers, PGR has native support for Xbox and PlayStation controllers via Bluetooth. The combat interface can be customized in this menu right here. As for binding your controller, the methods are the same for Xbox and PlayStation. First off, you'll need to ensure that your controller is paired to your device. In this example, I have my DualShock 4 paired to my phone. Simply select each field and bind it to a button on your controller. Once you're done, you're all set. The input lag seems to be unnoticeable, so it's a pretty good control scheme if you choose to play with a gamepad on your mobile device. Last but not least, setting the joystick to dynamic controls will allow for more flexibility if you tend to miss the movement stick a lot. It'll edge us to your point of contact and takes it as the center. We've come to the end of this video and I hope it has been useful to you. Download links and guides will be included in the description below. Consider leaving a like, comment or subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.